to say to everyone, everyone who's watching that I was where you are and, um, and I'm better now. I'm not done, but I'm so much better. And I know that I will be done eventually and we all will be. And just again, like, I can't say enough. Like, you know, one thing I was thinking about last week when I was thinking about this interview is for so long, I needed validation. I wanted accountability. And I just felt like I needed that and I needed confirmation about what was actually happening to me. And I learned through this process that you can't look to other people to give you that. We have all of that that we need inside of us. And we also have it in this community. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I am validating your experience. I understand. And um, I've been in the worst of places and I've come out of it. And again, just the confidence that everyone will be better. And if I can recover, if I can get from where I was to where I am now, you will too. And we just have to hang on, just survive, keep going, whatever you've got to do, just get through it. And, and you'll string enough days together to where you'll start noticing improvement and just know that you have a life waiting for you on the other side of this. You just have to give your body, I think, what it needs to heal. And for each of us, it's going to be something different. But I've seen some of the sickest of the sick get better. And here I am all these years later when I was the young one calling over the UK looking for hope, you know, and now they've all retired or gone. And, you know, now I've, I'm the old one. And that's all, that's, that's all we can do is give that hope is free. And, and we, we just have to give that constantly. And if we could tell people anything is please, please just do something to calm your nervous system as you're going through this. Protect yourself from bad stories, which is why we only want to bring the good stories. You know, I don't want somebody listening to a horror story. I don't like horror movies. So why in these groups, when we did them years ago, we, had, we could only do it by writing your success stories as you left the groups. And people get mad that people have left. Why? They need to go have their lives. Some of us are sticking around and that's okay. Go have your life. So, and then if I, you know, like I would say, I'm like the godfather. If I need you someday, I will call you and ask you to talk to someone, you know, yeah. you'll do the same thing. Some people just lay on the couch because they cannot move. That is fine. You're doing it right. If you stay alive, that's right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I always just say, you do what you can do when you can do it and not a moment to not a moment sooner. Like you, you do, you know, it'll evolve. Just hang in there. I define healed as. I can live my life today and, and I'm not held back by the damage that was done anymore. I can do everything that I want to do. Bar none, like I, that's it. I, it doesn't hold me back anymore. In fact, like I feel like I can do more now than, than I could before any of this stuff happened. Um, I feel like I'm a better person. I feel like I've grown in so many ways because I was forced to, like I had to find a way through this. So I had to find coping skills. I had to educate myself. I had to read as many books, listen to as many podcasts and interviews as I possibly could. And all that stuff has like enriched my life so much. Like I'm a better father. I'm a better husband. I'm a better friend. I'm a better neighbor. I'm a better person in my community. And it's because I've had like, I went through this horrible thing and I tried to make some meaning out of it. Like, I'm not going to just like, let this be like a gratuitous injury that happened to me. And it's like, it's not going to like, this isn't going to define who I am. Like I'm going to find a way to like make some sense out of this whole catastrophe. And, and, and I have like, that's, that's like the hope. Like I, I want to show people it's like, it doesn't yeah, like it sucks. It's, horrible to go through it's it's absolutely terrible and it's terrifying and it's all that and, and people can really lose a lot of stuff and time and years of their life but on the other side you can come out of it you can heal you can heal to the extent that you can go on and live a good life and and live like a lot of years ahead of you to you know really enjoy your life the scariest thing i think for all of us and like you could probably attest to this too like the people you talk to or just your own experience like 
we're, we're afraid that like, we're going to be the one to like not heal. Like we're going to be the one that's we're permanently damaged and we're never going to get past like wherever we're at now. It's never going to get better. Like, you don't know how bad it is. It's like, yeah, I do. Like, I, I know it sucks. Um, I, that was my biggest fear. My biggest fear was like, like, what if I don't like, what if, Oh my God, like that was the most terrifying thought that I was like, I cannot let myself go there. Like I have to keep moving. Like I have to put my, my mind on, on something else and something positive. And just like that video that you showed again, like the, hold on to like those, whatever, three minutes that that guy's saying, like, Hey, I got through it. I'm on this other side. Like hold on to that. Like that, let that be your guiding force and your guiding light to like pull you through this, to know that like, you can absolutely live a better life. I mean, that's the whole reason, like I started, I made a video about it to begin with. It was just like to let people know, like as, as bad as I was, you know, like the horrible, you know, you know, very like traumatic thing that like I went through, um, you know, I, I, I feel good today. I feel like I feel awesome being off of medication. Um, I know that it's, it's, it's possible, you know? And so it's, it's awesome that we can like, I mean, it fills me like with so much gratitude, like talking about it because, you know, all the, like the different directions, like my life could have gone to be like here now off of that, like living my life, like present moment awareness. I'm okay. I'm, I'm grateful for like what I went through even in some regards. And what I have today is um, it's the biggest thing. Like I, I, I want to like give that to everybody, but just like everybody's got to like walk their own little path and, and like go through this journey. But, but to, but to let it be like something that can really like forge you and fire and really, it really change you. It can, I, and I'm not the only one, I'm sure you could say the same thing, right? Like it's changed you for the better, like in so many ways. Yeah. I say like, I live deeper. I love deeper my capacity to like hold other people's suffering to feel like I can just sit this morning. I went outside and looked at the sunrise and it's like, I am filled with awe and wonder. I never felt that on drugs. Never. I never felt that before drugs. I just was about my day. You know what I mean? So, and, and I could die tomorrow and be completely happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, the, it's that's the gifts on the other side. And I think, I wouldn't have believed it when I was in it. I was, I didn't believe coaches. I thought everybody's full of crap. These success stories are lies. Like I got something else. This is different. You know, I still have symptoms and I'm really honest about that. Mine are mostly visual. Um, and they do, it does prevent me for like, I want to go rock climbing right now. And I can't probably like severely high up. There's some uh, bridges and bridges and roadways that I want to go see. And I just can't quite do it because my eyes are kind of funky with depth perception and stuff like that. But I've had other brain injuries. So is that the brain injury? Is that the benzo? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm still waiting. I keep seeing improvement. So, but it does not, but what I have right now, anything else, it does not prevent me from doing. In fact, I do more, like you said, do more than I've ever done. I roller skate. And then the next day I go play ping pong. And the next day I play tennis. I never lived like that before. <laughs> I'm like, what are we going to do today? I'm going to park city, Utah. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have a yeah. good time. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. And there's so much more available for people to be able to go and process and feel in these non-judgmental supportive spaces. It's not perfect, but to me, like that's helpful. Anybody watching this who's found you, that's a resource, you know, and you have other resources and now they can look at me and find resources. There's so many more places. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's not perfect, but it's getting better. And I think my takeaway from this conversation, and I guess I just, I never put it in these words before, but that your, your grief, your trauma, your healing process or not healing process, because you don't have to heal grief. Um, and some of your trauma is not, you know, I guess just being a human it's sacred. Like don't, yes. don't give your, don't cheapen your pain, I guess, by letting someone rearrange the decks of it. You know what I mean? The furniture, yeah. like totally. it's a sacred thing and you should earn the right to hear my story. And That's I need, right. I need to process it my own way. And I need to be around people that honor that. That's right. That's what I it think. Is, I it is sacred grief and pain and anything you've been through that changes you. It's sacred all of these bad things happened to me. I truly believe because it forced me and pushed me into my true purpose, which is helping humans live better lives. And as I was going to bed last night, I was like, you know what? Like I, I am lucky. Like I get to wake up 
every single single day of my life doing what I love, doing what I love. And what brings me like true joy is knowing that I'm helping others change their lives too. Like that's, I think a lot of people, not everybody ever gets to a place where they know their true purpose, right? And in terms of mental health, I think that's a a missing piece for people. It's so important for people to know what their purpose is, because if we don't have purpose, then what are we even doing here? Right? Like it can feel empty. So um, if you are going through psychiatric drug withdrawal right now, it's like, just keep hanging on and know that the healing process is not linear at all. It's going to be winding roads, but what stuck with me during my journey was knowing that, you know what you do heal, do what you can do what you have control over to help with that healing process and never lose hope. Like you have got to cling to hope so much and believe that you are going to get better. And I promise you will just know that like nobody has to understand what you're doing or has to understand your journey, do what feels right for you, because no matter what, we're not going to make everybody happy. Somebody's always going to be judging you probably because people some people suck. So what would do what feels right to you. And, you know, if you feel like, you know, so like social media, for instance, it's like, for me personally, I don't scroll through social media. There's too much noise. It's just too much. If it's, if it's not negative, if it's not positive, I don't want it in my life. So just, you know, focus on you and your only and, and your, and your journey. And yeah, I love that you have to believe in healing, believe in healing. And even though you may, you know, feel like dying right now, you know, you have to cling to hope and, and I know it's easier said than done, but it's like, ask yourself, okay, like, what is something that I could maybe do right now to get my head in a better place? Because I know how difficult that is. Like when you feel like death, like, like you said, like, oh, be positive. Like, it's not that easy. So put on, put on an audible, find a podcast, talk to a friend. Like if you have a good friend or family or support system, sometimes just communicating with someone, telling somebody, Hey, like, I feel like crap right now. Just talking through your emotions. Know that also know that you are not crazy because I think a lot of people too, right? They, they want so badly to get off of these medications. And now when they're going through psych withdrawal, they start to be like, oh my God, I am crazy. Maybe I need these, but it's not you. It's what your body's going through right now to heal and recover. So know that the pain and suffering that you are in right now, that it will pass you know, take it one day at a time and, and look at your, your pain is, is building you, uh, into a better human and there's going to be purpose for it. We lost ourselves. We lost our health. We had, you know, through no fault of our own, really just that a genuine want to heal. And we went to the wrong people, you know? And so then it's not fair the way it happens, but like, it is an opportunity to get back the life that you deserve, that you want to live that you, that you earned, you know, like through this, through the suffering. So just kind of like just the transformation, like part of it for us is time because our neurotransmitters just have to repair themselves. But Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I just, it's the human body, really. It's the human body. Like it is capable of amazing things. If you give it what it needs. When you give it the right inputs, it is unbelievable. What can happen? Yes. Anything is possible we can't guarantee how fast things are going to happen. But what we can guarantee is that if you put these things into practice or the things that you decide are important or the one thing or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. What we can guarantee is that from where you are, you're going to get better and you're going to get better again and you're going to get better again, right? And that's That's all you need to keep doing these things, right? So the guarantee is that when you start to focus on these things, things are going to get better, guaranteed, right? the more we allow ourselves to be gentle and compassionate and know that okay it doesn't mean that i because i have committed to healing it doesn't mean that i can't even take like one day off or i can't have a day when i'm like ah, 
oh, to the whole world. You know, we are Same. human. Yes. But when we have this, we have an inner compass, you know, we can get lost, but the inner compass will still point north, will still point inwards. And so this is the beauty, like we can be human, we can be raw, we can be angry, and then we know that this is not going to last, that's not who we are, and the compass is always going to point us back home you know, towards, towards us. And it takes courage and it takes commitment. It's not easy for sure, but it's much easier, I would say, or maybe not easier, but it would be at least a better way of, you know, going on this in this healing journey. You will get through this and things will get better. Yeah, but it may take a long time, but you just have to stick with it. And on a personal basis, you will get better as, as, a, as an infected individual or as the person providing that, that care, things will get better overall. That's on the personal side. Uh, on the professional side, people are listening to this now. The FDA has engaged on this after, well, they denied a previous petition that was written way back in 2008. And uh, it was pretty much rejected out of hand. And here they came back in 2020 with, a, oh, we discovered this thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they did very thorough, thorough research to come back with that, but they moved in the right direction is my point. And they continue to move in that direction and there's interest in it and there's a sympathetic directors at the FDA who have recognized the problem. Uh, they, they tend to concentrate more on the let's, let's remove the suffering of current patients side rather than let's stop the input to the whole problem. There's a little less focus on that other than the, uh, the warnings, the, the boxed warnings from the FDA. But they're getting there. They're moving. In, you know, all these wheels move slowly, especially when it's deeply entrenched uh, uh, medicine. It's been around for 60 years. So we're not going to change the world overnight. So don't give up. Really reflecting on the things that are positive in your life really does have an impact. Even if it's one little thing that you can grasp, that's positive. Yeah. Um, really, you, you want to, you know, because the mind will go to negative more quickly than it goes to positive. Even for someone like me who isn't injured, right? I have to make a mental say, wait a minute, I'm looking at this negatively, I need to reframe my thinking here. Yeah. So it takes a little more effort to do that. So mm -hmm. just practice like focusing on one positive thing to get your mindset out of that, even if it's for a moment, yeah. um, because it can get dark there and you can feel alone. And, and I call that the healing mindset. Like guys, mm -hmm. I know some of you that are listening are very already dysregulated. You're in that injured state. And you, I'll tell you this in a coaching session, you know, this many of you that I work with, it's like, okay, I know I am suicidal right now and I'm feeling horrible and I don't even know when this is going to end. But the overall mindset is people recover from this. I've recovered from it. Other coaches have recovered from it. There's hundreds of people that have recovered it before you. You have to know there is an end point. I just have to do this one second at a time, one day at a time. I am going to get my life back right now. It doesn't feel like that. And I don't believe that but I have to keep going. And that is the mindset. It's not positivity. Yeah. It's not toxic positivity. Right. It's like, this is the reality of the situation. Yeah. I have a really bad flare. It's my body's healing. I will get there. It's just a matter of time. And it's hope. So, it's holding on to that hope. Yeah, you got to hold. keep that pulling healing. that back that mm -hmm. like, this is bad, but I'm going to get through it. And many people have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The hope is, is that there is healing in all of this. Not only is there healing, but what I have found is there's a transformation that occurs with the person and they find a new purpose in life. They start identifying and they, or they find their identity. They, they re-identify with, with a purpose in their life. And they say, man, like, like, for instance, I have a patient who's like, you know what? I I've always wanted to be a teacher and going through this whole process have made me realize that the whole time I was in this toxic work environment that my real passion was teaching. So he's going back to school for teaching and he's finding his passion in teaching another, you know, so I find patient, like another one is like, I identify as a coach. Like, like I realize that I am a coach now. Like this is, this is what brings me joy. This is what helps me. And you find these patients like are finding their, their new identity through pause through the injury through they, they because you're doing a lot of reflection on your life and i think it it really brings uh to to matter here where you start to think of what in my life can i do that that i can give back 
once you come out of this, right? You start thinking about that more so than you ever thought of before. And so some people give back like you, Angie, like here you are giving back to this mm-hmm. community. And, and a lot of the others who've been injured, they find a way to give back mm-hmm. to others and they find, they've redefined their purpose in life or they find their purpose if they never had a purpose. So the path to healing in and of itself, I believe in the end, when I see people who have healed from this, especially those who have been injured, they have more of appreciation for life and for the simple things. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they learn to live a more simple life yeah. and then they find their redefine their purpose in life. And, and they're so much happier than they ever were before their quote unquote normal. And they never imagined that that normal would be what it is. So the healing, I think, process, it's hard, the, the process itself. But once you get through it, and then you can reflect and look back, you're going to become a new person, a better person better. for it. Yeah, That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's what you no, see. No, I totally agree me, with you. I, I think, see that. Yeah, I called it like a speed pass. Like, wow, how did I become this really cool person really fast? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, through your suffering, you're going to be, you're going to reach your potential and you will create. And and I always like, I used to hear that stuff when I was like sitting on the couch, taking 15 medications a day. Um, Like, oh, you can create the life you want. I was like, they are full of it. Like I am trying and I can't, you know, but I couldn't reach my potential because I was so medicated, you mm-hmm. know, and doing mm-hmm. all the wrong things and listening to the wrong people telling me what to do. So I, I find like people live deeper and wider and more love and more compassion and more patience and more of themselves and more freedom than ever. And I, yeah, that's what I see. I love mm-hmm. it. I love watching that. I just think it's beautiful. Yeah, me too. Beautiful. And it's, yeah, when they're, you're, when you're stuck in the very beginning, it's hard to see this end, but it's like something blossoms, like something just, and when that turning point happens, when that, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful it's to beautiful. be a part of that. Hope is I love you. I see you. I'm with you. I believe you. You're okay even though you feel like you are being tortured in your own body, that's real. And we all recover. It sounds like a horseshit bullshit story. Angie always says that, but you know what? Angie's right. We will get our life back. We just don't know when and hang on. If you can possibly hang on and use that shit that I used in AA just for today. Do your best to stay in today. Do what's right in front of you. Keep shit real simple. Invite support in as much as you can. Help your family and friends get educated about what this is. Don't let your family system gaslight you into, you think that's not hope it is because the only way that we have a chance is to not do this alone. We cannot do this alone. And there are people like Angie, people like me, there's a big support community out there. There's medicating normal, there's inner compass initiative. We don't have to walk through this alone. And my invitation is that like, I know it's impossible to believe, but hang on to my hope, hang on to my story and know that if it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Because a year ago, I would be like, F all y'all, this is, I'm never going to get better. I'm always going to be like this. I'm never going to work again. I'm never going to be able to make money. I'm never going to be able to listen to music and dance and move my body and have community. And I have all that again. And I don't know why or how, and it's not fair that some of us get better faster than others. Hang the fudge sickles on because the other side of this, I'm experiencing awe that I have never experienced in my whole life. I go out in a forest and I see these trees and I'm like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And I love my kids in a way. Mm -hmm. it's like if you can please hang on I promise you'll get your life back I promise and if you didn't have a life before and if your life before was pure shit we'll figure that out too we can do hard things we can we can do this